All right, hope everyone's doing well today. I'm actually filming this the day of Christmas Eve, so Merry Christmas to you if you're watching this. Um, so basically, in the past, I've done a lot of videos in, in terms of the reenacting, and I can I plan on continuing to do that. Um, but over the past five, six years, um, as I've been reenacting, I've also been collecting a lot of items. And if you follow me on Instagram, um, then you're well aware of some of those items that I've collected. As a, I posted a few, you know, live videos and stuff like that, uh, showing off some different pieces that I have collected. And the thing is, I've mainly focused, you know, World War II helmets as my primary source uh, and, and piece of collection um, in terms of all World War II military um, that I do collect. So, yeah, I just decided, you know, maybe it's time to go ahead and share some of the items that I have. And I think I'm going to create a series starting off with, you know, some of my M1 helmets. Um, going through and showing, you know, each one off a little bit. Uh, talking about the different types of helmets there are. Kind of filling you guys in on, you know, what's what and what to look for if you're, if you're trying to get one for yourself or if you have one already. Uh, distinguishing those key differences and just kind of making, you know, educational videos in regards to, you know, M1 helmets and potentially German helmets here in the future. Um, but really, like I said, my collection consists of helmets and it's mainly M1 helmets. So, yeah, I don't want to extend the intro too much longer. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd, you know, give you guys a quick rundown on what my plan is here in the uh, near future. And I, like I said, I'm going to continue to put these out. So we'll consider this the first video. So today we have the M1 helmet. This is a World War II USMC helmet. Uh, as you can see, it has the Marine Corps um, helmet cover on it. And let me give you guys a quick 360. I have it on this nice little helmet stand. I picked these up on eBay. Talked about that in a live video on Instagram. And um, yeah, it's in pretty good condition. Now, if you guys do follow M1 helmets and if you know anything about these Marine Corps helmets, then you know that there's different types, there's different patterns, um, different generations. And so this is, or patterns, yeah, that's really the proper term for it. So this one here is a first pattern, meaning this is the first one ever produced. Um, these were used in the early war in the Pacific theater. As you know, the Marines did fight there in the Pacific. And so this is what they came up with. This is their best form of camouflage that they uh, decided to create for you know, the foliage and, and the setting that they were in over there. So yeah, that's a quick 360. Now, the chin straps on this helmet are late war chin straps. And the way you can identify that is usually based on this buckle here. It's a, uh, it's a larger buckle and it's completely flat. Now on the mid and early war ones, um, they look a little bit different, but We'll see those in another video, um, but there's a little piece that sticks out here. They're a little bit smaller, um, but yeah, in terms of the late war ones, you can usually distinguish them based on the fact that, like I said, they're a little bit larger and they're flat. Now, correct me if I'm wrong on that. I'm not an expert on the chin straps, but that is the way I personally distinguish them. So yeah, looking here at the helmet again, um, you know, as you can see, it's in relatively good condition, but there is some type of uh, dirt, mud, sand, maybe even blood. Um, I'm not entirely sure. You know, I've had some guys tell me in the past that you can put a black light up to it and determine exactly what it is by doing that. I have not tried that yet, but maybe that's something I should do. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, but yeah, the way you can really determine this is a first pattern. Um, Again, I'm not an expert, and I know that there's probably other ways to do this, and there's probably more professional ways to do it. But for me personally, I'm looking for foliage slits, um, which are the little slits that are put in uh, a lot of the covers that are the later war ones. Clearly, this one does not have that. Um, and actually, they kind of look like this. This is just a tear, um, but it kind of does look like that. You would see those all over the helmet cover, and... Um, you know, those would be used for foliage, you know, like incorporating sticks or whatever they had that would match the terrain um, plants and stuff like that. Just kind of incorporating it into their helmet cover 
and creating a better camouflage light or that way. And again, that that was done later war. So that's how you can determine that this is a early generation first pattern. Um, there's also no EGA stamped on it. Again, a lot of the later war ones, you'll see an EGA um, Eagle Globe and Anchor stamped on the front, which is the Marine Corps insignia. This one does not have that. All right, so I think we've seen enough of the uh, exterior of the helmet here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you the inside now. All right, guys, so here's the liner. Now, the thing that's unique about the M1 helmets is they have a steel shell and then the liner, which are two separate pieces. Now, I'll show you that here shortly because I'm going to end up taking this liner out and we're going to look a little bit more at the cover um, because I'm going to kind of show you what to look for in regards of a real versus fake because there's a lot of really good fakes and replicas out there nowadays um, that are on the market. So you really got to be careful when you're buying these or if you have one and you're trying to determine whether it's authentic or not. But like I said, we'll get to that. Anyway, here's the inside of the liner. It's very nice. Um, everything's there. It's got its uh, neck strap here. Uh, it's marked Sergeant. Pretty cool. Um, you got your sweatband on the inside here. It is not in the best condition, but I've also seen a lot worse. There's actually some dirt or sand that is still in the bottom here, and I do not plan to clean that out. I'm going to leave that alone entirely. Um, that gives the helmet character, and it also you know, kind of shows the history of where this helmet was. And um, yeah, it's, a, it's just a, something that's a little bit more personal to this helmet. So, you know, when I see stuff like that, I, I actually prefer um to, to buy it or collect it because like i said it gives the helmet character and it just makes it that much cooler for me personally anyway so yeah here's the inside of the uh, helmet liner and the helmet it's really nothing too crazy uh you just got your standard webbing here and um yeah i think that's pretty much all i need to show you there it's a westinghouse manufacturer and uh yeah let's go ahead and take this thing out all right, so we got the helmet here with the cover and the liner, which has been pulled out. So again, here's our liner. This one is actually not painted. Um, I believe it's an early war liner. You know, correct me if I'm wrong. Again, I'm not an expert on this stuff, um, but I, I believe it is. And the reason I think it is, um, and it's not super early war. You know, I understand that, that the early, early ones looked uh, very different than this. But the reason I do think it might be an earlier war one is because of those unpainted a washers and i believe they're unpainted i don't think they were painted gray i think that is the default color the manufacturer color um, and again correct me if i'm wrong on this guys but that is my analysis of this liner um, overall great condition beautiful now here's the helmet uh this is a fixed bail and fixed bales are an early war manufacturer as you can see there the bail is fixed to the helmet um now, the swivel bales are also identified as World War II. Um, really, when it comes to swivel bales, though, it's not a guarantee that it's going to be a World War II shell. Usually, you're going to be able to check that based on the seam that's here in the front. Um, if it's a front seam helmet, then yes, that can be identified as a World War II shell, whether it's a swivel bale or a fixed bale. Now, there's also helmets that have a rear seam in the back. And I'll show you that here shortly. I'm going to take this cover off. But if it's a rear seam, then yes, it could potentially still be World War II. Now, all rear seams are going to be a swivel bale. Um, but at that point, you're going to have to check the heat stamp. And that heat stamp is going to be found here on the inside of the helmet, uh, right around this area. And again, we'll get to that shortly. I'll show you that. But yes, you can I usually identify your helmet. If it's a front seam, it's a guaranteed World War II shell. If it's a rear seam... It might be, chances are, it's probably not, but there's a lot of ways to identify it. And again, we'll get to that. All right, so looking back here now at the helmet cover. So again, we talked a little bit about it earlier on how to identify whether it's an original or a replica. And this is the best way to do it that I have found. Um, you know, I, I did research online when trying to buy one. This is what everyone talks about. It simply comes down to this print right here and this sewing that's on the inside of the khaki camouflage so as you can see the green camouflage usually is the one that's seen more throughout the war at least that i've seen more in pictures and stuff like that is this side um but you can see the sewing there's really 
not a specific or exact print to the sewing. It's it's kind of differs throughout the whole thing. Um, yeah, it seems that it's circular, but basically this side's more iconic and it's a little bit more distinguishable um, in terms of the replicas and the fake, or um, excuse me, the replicas and the originals. So here we go. This is the inside of the tan USMC helmet cover and see the sewing, see how it's like a triangle. It's a perfect triangle all the way through. That is the key way to identify whether your helmet cover is going to be a real one or a fake one because the replicas, they're not going to have this perfect triangular shape to the sewing. It's going to probably look something kind of like this or it's going to look completely different from by, or either or. Now, I've also had people talk about the Pac-Man. That's what they call this guy here, this specific little moon shape, half crescent moon. That's also something that they've called it um, online and stuff like that. The Moon Crescent, the Pac-Man, that seems to be another uh, way people identify it. Basically, and I don't know how true this really is, um, and you guys can you know correct me or just let me know in the comments, but basically I've heard people say that um, if it's a perfect Moon Crescent where there's not that uh, circular guy in the mouth there, then that's a key sign that it could be a replica. Now, with this one having that little bulge there in the mouth, that kind of shows that this is an authentic one. Again, I don't think that's the best way to identify whether it's an original or not. Um, but I've seen that been, you know, talked about online quite a bit is, like I said, the Pac-Man, Pac-Man, or the, the Moon Crescent. I don't know. I wouldn't do it based on that. I think the pattern here in the sewing is the best way to identify it. Again, you guys let me know what you think. Um, but yeah, that's personally how I'm going to identify um, a helmet cover on whether I think it's real or fake. And now there's also other characteristics that you got to look at. You know, just the actual condition of it. Um, if it's really clean, if it's, you know, looks like that it was aged on purpose. You don't think that it's a natural age to it. Stay away from it. Um, like I said, there's a lot of good replicas out there. So do your research, you know, don't do it just based off of this video. I would look a little bit more into it. Um, but yeah, I digress. I don't want to get too much into that. I'm really here just to show you the helmet, but you know, I just want to make sure you guys aren't going to get fooled and end up buying a, a USMC helmet from World War II and you spend $500, $600 on it and then it turns out to be fake. That sucks. Um, Luckily, I haven't had that happen to me, um, but I know people that have been screwed over by that. So just be careful. Don't let that happen to you. And like I said, do your research. Anyway, all right, let's take this thing off. All right, guys. So here it is. Here's the helmet with the helmet cover off. Now, again, I said $500, $600. These things vary in price significantly. Um, really depends on... on all the factors that we've kind of talked about fixed bail swivel bail front seam rear seam you know the actual paint of it of the helmet the exterior of it uh the helmet first pattern second pattern third pattern there's a lot of characteristics you know if you're actually interested in, in learning about this stuff then you know continue to do your research continue to look online and and look at the key differences um and really, that's that's what I found is the best way to learn about this type of stuff. And I'm not a pro. I'm not an expert on it. But these are just things that I'm sharing with you that I've learned, you know, through buying, through looking at these things and, and just researching them. So let me put that back there. So, yeah, as you can see, we talked about this earlier. Front seam right there in the front. You can see the seam. Again, it's a front seam. It's a World War II shell. There's really nothing else to be said about that. Um, the condition of this helmet is relatively nice. You know, it's, it's got some rust there. Uh, looks like the paint has gone away a little bit up there on the front. Overall, it gives that used look and I, I appreciate that. I like that again. I think it gives it character. You know, we talked about the sand inside of it, the dirt inside of the liner. You know, I like a helmet that has some type of wear to it. If it's, you know, perfectly mint, I, I I don't know. It just has less character to me. And I 
I still like to collect those types of items, but you know, this one, it gives me the perception that it went, you know, it went through the war. It's, it's been through the action. Um, I'm sure it has some, some stories and, um, yeah, it's just an overall, it's a cool piece based on, on the wear and tear on it. You know, as you can see, at least I hope you can see there's like scratches and stuff like that. Um, on the top here, there's a small dent, um, little bit of lack of paint on the top, everything you'd expect from a helmet that was, you know, put through the war. Now, something cool about this liner, and I know we're talking about the helmet, but I do want to talk about this liner really quick. Show you here from the top. Look at that. So since we're talking about personalization, character, all these things that, you know, we see from some of these helmets, check out this little star that was carved into the top. Pretty cool. At least I think it's cool. Um, I know I'm a, I'm a nerd and a geek for this type of stuff, but to me, again, this shows character. This is like such a unique thing to see in helmets and helmet liners. You know, it's like coming across a name, um, inside of a helmet, you know, that's, that's probably the best thing that you can find. Um, because then you can look it up and actually, you know, find out information about that soldier. But this is also really cool because, you know, this just shows that they were just normal people like us and you know they had downtime they you know got bored they this guy might have been an artist maybe he just i don't know maybe he just had a lot of downtime and uh ended up taking a knife and carving a perfect star into the top of his liner overall it's just a really cool unique thing about it and so that's something that stands out to this helmet and this helmet liner um, again, this set, this is a complete set. It was found all together. Um, I didn't mix or match any of these parts. I got it all as one. So yeah, here's the three different parts of this helmet. Again, the liner on the left, shell in the middle, and your helmet cover there on the right. Um, so yeah, I'm going to put it all back together, and then I think I'm going to conclude the video. All right, guys. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I know I didn't... <laughs> The thing is, I, I forgot to show you the heat stamp on the inside of it. Um, and again, that's that's a way that you distinguish the year it was manufactured, also the year of the manufacturer, whether it was a McCord or a Schluter. Um, and I guess we'll have to get to that in another video. I talked a lot already about, you know, how to identify these helmets, a lot of the basics and stuff like that. And um, I, I just think I'll probably touch up on, on some of the things that I didn't talk about in future videos. Um, really, if I wanted to talk about everything in terms of these M1 helmets, I could be sitting here all day talking to you. Um, but that's, that's not something I want to do right off the bat in the first video. Like I said, we already covered a lot. Um, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, that's the M1 helmet. That is the World War II USMC helmet. You know, let me know what you guys think. Um, again, this is a first video here, um, kind of doing this type of thing where, we go through and we talk about, you know, what we're looking at in terms of these helmets. And um, yeah, let me know if you have any, you know, recommendations on how I can make this better. Uh, whether it's the setting, the lighting, uh, maybe it's me talking, maybe I'm talking too much. Just, you know, give me your thoughts and opinions in the comments, drop them down below. And uh, yeah, if you want to see more of these types of videos, feel free to subscribe and drop a like. Um, it would help out the channel. I'm going to try to grow it the best if I can. And uh, yeah, I, like I said, this is an intro to what I'm going to continue to do here in the future. Um, and again, we're hopefully going to be producing a little bit more of World War II reenacting content as well on top of this collection content. Um, as COVID was a thing uh, not too long ago, we weren't able to reenact. So now that we're kind of coming out of that, hopefully I can get back out there and uh, create some more content for you guys. So yeah, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one.